Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo, and today we have a regular singles narrated Wi-Fi battle for you. Now I was actually testing out a team combination for the Indigo League of Legends before I went up against Trainer Connor. Uh, that match will be up later this week, of course. Um, but I just wanted to kind of see how the, the team synergy went, um, especially trying out this particular Bisharp, which is Sephiroth, of course, Substitute with Swords Dance, Iron Head, and Sucker Punch. Uh, seeing Mega Lopunny right off the start, this is good practice actually because I also have a battle against Lance. He has a Mega Lopunny, so it gives me a little bit of practice trying out things against that. Maple being max HP, max defense allows me to take that fake out very, very well. Uh, and Lopunny generally carries fighting, return, uh, and maybe a coverage move like Ice Punch. So if I can take those hits, awesome. Now here, uh, he either predicted my double switch very, very well, Max did, uh, or he just wanted to hit something with a knockoff. I went out into this Venusaur. This Venusaur is actually um, troops with a specially defensive build, but is built to be a Mega Venusaur, which can definitely 2 KO a Heatran. Unfortunately, I miss the Sleep Powder when I predicted Heatran to switch in. I should have just gone straight for Earthquake, but I wanted a Sleep Powder in case he did not go directly to Heatran. Uh, so I'm unable to pick up the 2 hit KO there but Heatran is nicely in range for something else to finish it off. Uh, Maple, the build that I have on it, the Clefable, it cannot do anything while Heatran is around. It's Calm Mind, Moon Blast, Moonlight, and Flamethrower. I wanted to try that out specifically because I knew Connor had a Scavalier. Also, um, people like Lance uh, have uh, Ferrothorn, so having that extra fire attack in there, especially on a Pokemon that normally would be threatened out by a Steel-type, a little bit surprising sometimes. Uh, but here he just goes out into his uh, Zoomerol. I I thought he might do that, but unfortunately this is my Mammal Swine that has Stealth Rocks on it. So it has Stealth Rocks, Icicle Crash, Ice Shard, and Earthquake. And so with that being said, um, I am able to finish it off quite nicely there. I needed to get rid of that Zoomerol for sure if I wanted um, not only my Mega Pinsir to really do anything, but uh, also Bisharp, just to avoid those player roughs and all that good stuff. Uh, just another f fake out here, no reason to try to predict around that. If he were playing a little bit more risky, that would suck because he could hit my Latias with a really powerful return or even an Ice Punch. But there's no, no reason to really predict any of that. Now here I just wanted to get off some more chip damage on Heatran. I didn't know what its set was, but I didn't think it had rest. Uh, it does have leftovers for recovery, so I just wanted to whittle it down to put it at a point where I can definitely KO it with my pincer if I need to. Um, I just wanted to give some insurance to my team generally to being able to take out Heatran. Uh, I don't have any fighting type moves on my Pokemon, so ground is going to have to be the way to go against Heatran. Now he does show me that he has Protect, Toxic, and of course from earlier we know he has Flamethrower. Uh, kind of annoying to face that. I can't really do much to it with Latias and I don't have Life Orb, so I didn't want to switch out per se, just because the switch to anything might be obvious and I don't want something getting hit by a flamethrower and I don't want anything else getting toxic because I don't have a cleric on the team to stop the toxic from being spread around too much. Um, Draco Meteor does do a pretty decent amount of damage for it being resistant and what I think is a specially defensive Heatran. So all intents and purposes, not the worst exchange here. Uh, I do actually end up switching on, not this turn, but the turn after, I think. No, it is this turn. And I try to go out in the Bisharp on what I thought was going to be a Protect or a Toxic. But he just goes straight for Flamethrower. So I don't know if he predicted me to go directly to Bisharp, or if he was just trying to tack on some chip damage to Latias. Either way, that switch kind of sucked. But that's okay. Um, this does give me a free switch in the Pinsir, whom I definitely did not want to switch in. I know I'm faster because this is a defensive Heatran, and I'm going to be able to Mega Evolve and KO it or at least something with an Earthquake. Um, Heatran being out of the way is so nice for my team. I would have preferred Heatran to be out of the way and still have Sucker Punch, but this is the best we can do. I will certainly take it. Now, I don't want to stand, of course, against Thunderous. Thunderous can do too many things against Pinsir, and it's faster than me. Uh, and of course, my priority isn't very good against it, so. Just gonna go right on the Latias. We see that his Thunderous, of course, does carry Life Orb, which is nice because he's gonna have some switches into Stealth Rock. 
Combine that with life orb, he'll be getting worn down relatively quickly, and I still have Ice Shard from my Mammoth Swine to hit him once he gets down to about that 50% life uh, point. Now he goes out into Landorus. I just wanted to go straight for Draco Meteor here. I didn't have any reason not to. Um, I'm very, very happy with the damage I see on Landorus here, just because it puts it well within range of a quick attack if I need to from Pinsir or from an Ice Shard. So the, the strategy here is really just making sure that all of my opponent's Pokemon are in a range where I can pick them off with the appropriate type of priority. Uh, not only does that work well against something like Law Punny, after it uses Fake Out, then I still have the ability to hit it with pretty decently powered priority type moves. But then those stronger Pokemon, such as Heatran, get worn down really quickly from switching in and out of me, putting a lot of pressure on them. I would like to work a, a momentum into this team a little bit more, Volt Switch or U-Turn, but not a lot of the people on my in ILL League team use those moves. So here I do make a bit of a misplay. I should have just left Latias in to be KO'd, because then I could have switched in um, Clefable and then Moonblasted, rather than letting it get hit like that. But that's okay. I do still have Mega Pinsir. Um, of course, the flying type area lay is going to be super effective against Lopunny. So I can just switch it in here. He actually switches into Trevenant, and I was, we were both actually pretty surprised that Trevenant took a quick attack from a Mega Pinsir. But I am Jolly and not Adamant, so I wanted that extra speed. As he goes back out into his Thunderous after Trevenant goes down, he has one more switch into Stealth Rock after attacking. So this is why I, in, the, in my head I wanted to go ahead and save Latias, but he has Hidden Power Eyes, so I could have just let Latias go down and then taken out or done a good amount of damage to something with Maple. A Life Orb boosted Moonblast with Stab, definitely not anything to mess around with. So we are able to take out Thunderous. Um, from the range of HP his uh, Lopani is at, he is not going to be able to be taken out by an Ice Shard, but that's okay because I just made sure that he is within range for Pinsir to do so. Lot, uh, Mega Lopani is much more bulky than it really otherwise gives out. Um, it looks a lot more springy than it really is. It's quite bulky though, it looks really cool in its design. But that's okay because one on one, I'm definitely going to be able to take out Mega Law Punny with Mega Pinsir. So in that battle of the Megas, Pinsir wins, and that's a pretty good trial for a team that I might be using against Mega Connor. So hope you guys enjoyed this battle video, and I will talk to you later. Bye bye guys.